In this quick video, I'm going to cover why does my econ exist. But first, let me go ahead and introduce myself. My name is John Pettifordell, Executive Vice President, Infinity with my econ. I've been teaching people personal financial success for the last 13 years of my life. But let's talk about a couple of facts before we even get started. Two thirds of Americans don't have $1,000 in savings that they can put their hands on. Only 24% of millennials have a basic financial literacy according to the National Endowment for Financial Education. 77 million Americans have debt that are in collections and the average household credit card debt is about $15,000. But the statistics get a little bit more alarming. Millennials, 72% of them have less than $10,000 saved. Generation Xers, who you would think have done a little better, 52% of them have less than $10,000 saved. And then let's get to the baby boomers. And this is a generation that everyone has looked at and seen that they've done major things and major strides with their finances and driven the American economy. But, only, but out of them, 45, only 45% of them, actually 45% of them have $10,000 or less. So when you look at that, ladies and gentlemen, that is financial disaster in the wealthiest country in the history of the world. There's more money here than anywhere else in the world, but most people here are struggling. As a matter of fact, 95% of the people in this country do not get to personal financial success. But now, that's a very interesting subject, personal financial success. I've talked to thousands of people all over the country and haven't found 50 people that even knew what it was. So let's talk about personal financial success, what it is and what it is not. OK, a lot of times we think personal financial success is lifestyle. So if we drive a nice car, live in a nice home, wear nice clothes. We think that they, we were, we're personally financially successful. But that's not true. A lot of times I see people are having these things and they really don't own them. They just have a whole bunch of debt. So. Let's not look at it as lifestyle, but it doesn't matter if you're a doctor, a lawyer, a school teacher, whatever it is you do for a living, you have two financial objectives. And what we're going to talk about is income for life. We call that personal financial success here at MyEcon. So number one, you need income during your working years. All right. Now that's going to come from one or two sources. That's either going to come from a job or it's going to come from a business. All right. You're going to trade time for money on the job. And when you can't trade time for money, then you have to have another source or you're going to trade expertise in a business. Problem is you can't do that forever. So you have to have a second source of income that comes from what is called income producing assets. Now you can call this retirement years, or we can call this our financial freedom years, however you feel most comfortable, but let's get really deep into this. You see, we're going to go with an example of a family making about $75,000 a year household income. Now on the left side, they have a job, 62.50 is the gross income, but they're at a disadvantage. They lose at least 25% to taxes before they ever spend a dime to take care of their family. So they have some issues there. They only have 4,700 to spend. In the business, you do a little bit better because no taxes are taken out up front. And then you have the opportunity based on the tax laws to settle up with the IRS at the end of the year. But here's the other problem. When we go out and make major purchases like buy a car or buy a home, they're going to use our gross income and not our net income. So now we're having bills that are now being created based on money that we never even see. That's a true problem. But now let's talk about our financial freedom years. The question we must ask ourselves is how many income producing assets do we need to replace that $75,000 a year? Now, what type of assets, stocks, bonds, real estate, mutual funds, private businesses, anything that you own that makes you money without you ever touching it. And I have a quick question for you. When is the last time you bought something that pays you without you doing anything? So let's take a look at this. As a rule of thumb, you need somewhere between at least 10 times to as much as 20 times what you make in a year in income producing assets. Now, most people I talked to, they didn't know they needed seven, eight, nine hundred thousand, a million plus dollars just to retire and have the same lifestyle, same cash flow coming in as they have today. So let's take a look at this. If you had $750,000 in your assets and you got a 10% rate of return every year, you would be able to have $75,000 a year and never have to touch the principal, which is the 750. You see, that's personal financial success because what we've done is we've replaced our income that came from source A and we still have that same income coming in without going back to work. A million dollars. If you get seven and a half percent, that's the same 75,000. 
But if you have only a 5% rate of return, you got 1.5 million that you need. So the lower the rate of return, the larger our income producing asset needs to be. So the question I have for you, how far along on this road are you? But let's take a look at how this thing starts to play out for middle America. We've got a couple of obstacles going on here. Let's assume we got at least $2,800 in what is called monthly payments on debts. Well, typically in the financial world, you hear this called debt to income. These are things that can be paid off. Homes, cars, credit cards, stuff like that, right? So let's take a look at a couple of numbers here. So we got a mortgage out here. Not a real big one. You know, this is kind of a, a, a I would say, a reasonably small one. All right. Car payment, 500 bucks. Credit cards, $400 a month. Now, remember, the average household has about $15,000 in credit card debt, so it's easily be $400 a month, okay? Student loans, if you have any type of uh, advanced education, well, you've got gone and gotten maybe some student loans, and now those things have now become due. And then we've got a little furniture out here because we wanted to have a nice place to sit when we are in our living room, all right? Well, look at what happened, though. We had 25% go to taxes. Then we had another 45% go to debt to income. We've already lost 75% of our gross income, and we're just getting started. My point of this whole conversation, ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to show you how you can do everything right, pay all your bills on time, get a good education, get a good job, and still end up in financial ruin. See, if you understand what we do here at MyEcon, you'll understand that our business system is a no-brainer, and it's the number one product in the world, okay? Now... Let's take a look at some other things. We got a couple of other what we call recurring expenses going on here. Utility payments, internet, cable, insurance, food. We got to eat, right? Got to put gas in the car. It's easy to spend $400 on gas. Actually, gas prices are even going up, so that number might be $600, right? Cell phone bill. A couple of people in the house, $120. Bucks. Well, that's another 26% of our income. Well, now, guys, have you ever driven your car? to the point where, you know, that gas needle kept inching and inching and inching down, and then the red light came on. The red light has just come on in your finances. You lost 25% to taxes, another 45% to debt to income. You got another 26% for recurring expenses. You've already spent 96% of your cash, and we still have not addressed some major, major points. Let's take a look even further. We got some other things in our lives that we're going to pay for, and we don't know what those are. Insurance is going to be X amount. Child care. Most households have at least two children. That's going to be X amount. Entertainment. We just had a holiday, okay? People call it a holiday, and, you know, it was Memorial Day, and a lot of people go and they barbecue and things like that, right? Well, when you do that, that's called entertainment, and that costs money. The next one coming is 4th of July and Father's Day, and all these things count as entertainment. Personal items. We got to have little personal things. If something breaks, get a new shirt, uh, whatever the case may be, have, buy a new pair of shoes, get our toiletries, you know, those things. So that's going to be X amount. So we probably need another 20% to just deal with these things here. But guys, we are officially broke and got some serious issues. 25% went to taxes, 45% went to debt to income, 26% went to recurring expenses, and 20% went to these additional lifestyle expenses. We've already spent 116% of our income. You might be saying, well, John, how in the world can they do that? Well, they're subsidizing their life on credit. Every time they run out of cash, they're putting things on the credit card with the idea I'm going to pay it down by the end of the month or I'm going to pay it down next month. And now what happens is the credit cards continue to creep and creep and creep up. Okay? So most Americans and most families are spending 125 to maybe as much as 150% of their income. So we haven't dealt with some other major things. We haven't set aside any money for retirement. No charitable contributions and we do not have any money going to our emergency fund. And these are some of the most important things that we have to address. Do you see the picture now? Do you see where the average middle-class family is making 75,000 to maybe $250,000 a year? Because even if a person makes more money, 
the expenses just get higher. The taxes go up. The mortgage goes up. The car payments go up. And now we're in the same situation. I always see people that I call broke at a higher level. They make $100,000 a year, but they spend one hundred and twenty-five. dollars They broke at a higher level. They're paycheck to paycheck. Okay? So let's take a look at the monthly cash flow we need to fix this or deal with this whole deal. All right? $62.50 is the gross income from the job. Well, let's go ahead and give to our church. Let's pay some tithes here. We've got some charitable giving going on. That's 10%. Let's take another 10% and deal with retirement. Let's take another, that other 45%, the debt to income, all those things. We're paying these things, household debt, recurring expenses, take care of our emergency fund, deal with the additional lifestyle, and pay our taxes. Do you understand that we're $2,500 in the hole? See, when you understand what's happening here, we got an issue. And what people tend to do when they kind of join other networking companies and not to say uh, anything necessarily bad about them, but I don't think people have the wrong kind of travel. They have this problem. I don't think people have the wrong kind of nutrition. They have this problem. I don't think people have the wrong kind of all the things that I see being sold in the direct sales industry. I think if we had a, a system and a product that could help people solve this, even if they weren't good recruiters and networkers and product sellers, I think we would have the number one product in the world. And that's why I think my econ is the number one business opportunity on the planet because there's a hundred million households that have a mess like this and they don't know how to fix it. Okay? So here comes my econ. See, what a person needs to do is get our income shifting membership and start a part-time or maybe even a full-time business with us. When you do this, what's going to happen is we're going to have a two-step process. The first step is a financial education. We're going to start teaching you about money. See, I went to school. I went to college and never learned anything about money. See, I want you to understand that. Most people in this country have very little financial literacy. Number two, we're going to give you a software system to help you implement all the strategies that we're talking about with the financial literacy program. That's amazing. With those two things and using a strategy called income shifting, we're going to help you change your life. What the income shifting membership is going to allow you to do is four basic things right here. Number one, we're going to help the average person minimize their taxes typically by 200 to maybe even $1,000 a month. Well, let's say that's about 400 bucks, and that usually happens within 10 to 14 days. And then we're going to make a little bit of money in this business that we have here, which is pretty easy to do. Very simple process. Let's say we can get an extra 200. Now, I know what you're saying. $200 a month is not a lot of money, but we have people that make as much as a million dollars. They have million dollar months in this company. So, but let's talk about 200. And then we got $400 on taxes. Well, now we also can minimize expenses and not lifestyle. What that means, we have a credit restoration system that will allow you to build and restore your credit. Typically, you would go somewhere and pay $400 to $1,000 for this, and we're going to teach you how to do everything that they do and remove all the negatives off the credit, stuff like that, and the credit score goes up. Well, now you can refinance your home, refinance your car, and also have lower car insurance rates and things of that nature. You got the same lifestyle, but you have lesser cost to maintain. Well, let's say that's another $200. Well, now we got a total of $800 between the three, making money, minimizing taxes, and minimizing expenses. Our software system is going to build you a financial plan that's going to have an asset accumulation strategy that's amazing. But it also has a debt elimination plan that'll put every single one of your debts in order, which one to pay off first. Now we're going to pay off all our car notes, credit cards, student loans, and mortgages within three to seven years with a lot of the government's money. Isn't that amazing? See, that's the number one deal. Being able to teach people this for a very, very low cost. And then once we start paying off debt, ladies and gentlemen, because we probably need at least three, two to $3,000 just to really solve that issue that we had on the previous page. So now we got asset accumulation. As we start paying off these debts, now you free up a thousand, maybe as much as three or 4,000, and we can take it and build our assets, stocks, bonds, real estate, mutual funds, private businesses. And now we can build personal financial success. So somebody kind of showed you this video. They wanted you to see what in the world we got going on. Get back with them and let them know you are ready to start income shifting. As you can see, this strategy here 
even if you're not a super duper business person, you can run this income shifting strategy and you can change your life. I look forward to working with you and meeting all of you and I'll see you at the top.